Okay, my friends, this is extremely, extremely important. This is the Royal Institution in London, the biggest people in the world in science. Now, I am about to show you that we have done what they're asking to do. Listen to this. That energy source is a reaction called nuclear fusion. And if it can be recreated on Earth, it has the potential to provide hum humanity with a new, clean source of energy that could last for millions of years. All right. And we can do this right now. Okay, my friends, we know we need fusion to power the planet, and we can do this without having the problems they're going to show right now. We need fission to create fusion. Let's watch what they have to say. This is um, one of the top people. These are, these are the top people in the world talking about fission and fusion. And the only way you can create fission is to split a larger particle in, and you fizz it, you break it apart. Right? No, so they, we broke them apart and then they come back together. When they join back together, they give off a ton of energy, a pro is what they say. So it joins two or more lighter atoms together. Now here's the problem. They're working with uranium and plutonium to, f to do fission. Well, when you f do fission of uranium and plutonium, you get chunks like this. Huge, huge, huge chunks of particles flying everywhere. And they, then they become so unstable, they want to get back to this ball, just like that. But now there's chunks here, chunks there. It takes forever for it to break down. That's called nuclear radioactive material. Now, what else, what is this one? Fusion, ooh, this is good. We're working with hydrogen. That's the smallest particles there is. That's this, this particle right here, all right? Now, we're working with particles even smaller than this, which is light. And we're splitting the light and then making fission with the light and fusion with the light and getting exactly what they want to get is, is the extreme amounts of energy. Now, here's what, they, here's what they want though. They're gonna end up with destroyed the earth with nuclear fuel that is a byproduct and it's radioactive like for forever and they're gonna end up with helium. All right, so what's that? Big deal. Because they, they put back together the pieces they broke here and made helium. And when they did, they had tons of energy. All right, energy production, fission. This is under development. No, it's not. It's already developed. Okay, I claim we have done fusion. Now listen to what they say is the energy increase. A million times greater than other energy sources is fission. Three to four times greater than fission is fusion. Okay, my friends, what you're seeing there is a particle of light. And this is green, it's a photon. Red comes exactly the same. They have a dark side and a bright side. And there's two of them together make a photon. One of them, just like that, is literally an electron. They can split. The black and the white can literally split. That is fission. We just talked about it. When they come back together, that's fusion. Let me show you that happening. This is red pulsed laser light. It's light. This is accelerating. And the particle that I just showed you, which was green, but they are red. I'll show you the red one. The same particle. It accelerates because it's being dragged through a venturi. Here you get fission. Here they come back together and you get fusion. This is what they're looking for. They're looking for this raw energy and we have it right here. And that cannot hurt you because this is in the sub-atomic range. They're working with particles like this and smashing them head on and getting chunks everywhere, big piles of chunks that are, are not complete. So they want to form, and, and what they do is they decay. And then they, they throw off a chunk, a littler chunk like this, and that smacks you in the face and, and breaks your face. You know, it, it cuts into your tissues and inside it, it damages your cells and DNA and all kinds of things. It really, it really causes havoc because they are so energetic and they're so big. They're big. Not like what we're working with. We're, work, we're, work, we're working this right here, right there. That's what we're working with. They're working with this, coming this way, and one coming this way, and just getting piles of trash everywhere. And then when those piles of trash recombine, they, they have a lot of energy given off. We already had that energy from light, from a piece of light right there. It breaks its apart, its little bits right there, and that cannot damage you, cannot hurt. It's no radiation. There's no 
combustion where we have expansion of gases there's just raw energy that we can retrieve within two weeks to a month we could have these in people's hands using them every bit of this is on the shelf we've already done it that's fission that's fusion okay I said I'll show you the red here is right here these are the red parts same exact part, same particles this is the, a, a picture of this whole same particle it's coming across here it's actually flipping its spin from up spin to down spin that type of thing and here is where the fission occurs and then after the venturi they recombine and that's fusion all right this is from CERN Fermi lab this is the muon neutrino electron neutrino the black ball the white ball this is when they concuss and separate the muon just stays the black ball the white one turns into a shower fission fusion we have done it raw energy and here's how we harvest it right here all we need to do is to create this event that I just showed you and when we get that energy over here we have to hit a solar panel basically there's new materials they're using transition metal percovites they call them and they can grab almost a lot of that energy back all right so we don't lose down to 10 or 20 percent we we are going to be up in the middle range of the percentages so if you started with five watts you should get a thousand watts if once you break and recombine them that's 207 times they say is the energetic value and then if we can get a half of that we got 500 watts that's a hundred times more than we started with so if we could just put five back in we got 950 whatever we got we got a lot of extra energy that's all we need is extra energy if we get extra coming out we can use it for anything we want and these are a dime a dozen we could start tomorrow if we would just get some help from the energy department and so far that has not come and we need it desperately and we need it now using our process not only can we create energy we can actually create new atomic structures with light physicists startled everybody's working with focusing lasers just like we are large hadron collider is going to be refitted to do focusing exactly like we are they just made a massive discovery here's another one just came out using lasers to create fusion to save the world with Kate Lancaster and she's doing the same thing they're focusing now they understand it's a focus that does the job and the focus is nothing more than crushing the fields there's another one just came out what is luminosity because that's what I've been screaming about is we can see these particles it's because of the luminosity because of the radiance and now they're talking well let's look into luminosity yes I think they should and they're going to upgrade the large hadron collider to do exactly what we're doing to create luminosity by focusing and that's all they're going to do is put focusing magnets in there instead of hitting things head on you got to crush them they're doing the same thing they're crushing fields crush 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 and then they see all the particles flying everywhere and then they dig through them for years and to find the little bits and pieces we see by squirting them through we started with light we didn't start with gigantic chunks everybody understands a hundred percent now we need new physics not a thing in the Bohr model works correctly when you get into the sub atomic range once you get into the atomic range once you're in this everything works fine but once you get into the nucleus it doesn't work okay now I don't believe there's a physicist in the world that would tell you that physics is correct now even Yale this is the professor at Yale and he's telling all the students this he's got good news and bad news news the bad news is that it's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively and the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively uh, Richard Feynman one of the big uh, figures in physics used to say no one understands quantum mechanics so in some sense the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it the point is here's my goal right now I'm the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics in about seven days all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics then you can go back and spread your ignorance everywhere else uh, that's the only legacy a teacher can want so all right he's being totally honest because nobody understands quantum mechanics it doesn't work and they can't solve any of it with the kind of things that they're trying to do to work with the Bohr model the Bohr model's not right you have to change the model into the dipole model which is dipole electron flood theory which I 
put out 50 years ago. Well, now I've been able to prove it with my light experiments.